Imagine you're launching a rocket, lighting a roadside flare, purifying water in the wild, or starting a life-saving campfire in the rain. What do all these scenarios have in common? They rely on oxidizers, special chemicals that supply oxygen to fuel a fire when air alone isn't enough. The oxidizer we will use here is potassium permanganate. In today's experiment, we will see this chemical in action. We will use potassium permanganate as an oxidizer to accelerate the decomposition, burning of paper. By the end, you will understand how oxidizers like this make flames burn hotter, brighter, or even exist where they normally couldn't. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. So if you like these videos and want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode. Also, if you want to influence the element we will be discussing next week, make sure to fill in the poll on the community tab of our channel. Now for example, modern rocket fuel propellants mix fuel with an oxidizer like ammonium perchlorate. So they can burn fiercely even in the oxygen-free vacuum of space. Emergency flares and fireworks use oxidizers such as nitrates and perchlorates to produce bright, long-lasting flames and colors. Strontium nitrate, for instance, is a common oxidizer in red signal flares to ensure a steady and visible burn. In survival kit, one multipurpose chemical often stands out, potassium permanganate. This deep purple crystalline powder can do a bit of everything. With a few drops of glycerin, it bursts into flame as a fire starter. In a pinch, it can disinfect or treat water by turning it into a pink antiseptic solution. And its vivid purple stain can even serve as an emergency signal on snow or cloth to attract rescue. Potassium permanganate is widely used in water treatment and disinfection because it's a powerful oxidant that doesn't leave toxic byproducts. Almost all its uses exploit its ability to release oxygen and oxidize other substances. In other words, it doesn't fuel fires itself, instead it makes other things burn better. It's non-combustible, but accelerates the burning of combustible materials. Now what we're going to do is draw a few lines on a piece of paper with a potassium permanganate solution. We're going to let it dry and then ignite one end of it. The result? The lines we drew will smolder and burn along the drawn pattern. Almost like burning a fuse spelling out a message. This happens because our drawn lines are loaded with an oxidizer that helps the paper burn in a control path. It's a visual and memorable way to see oxidizer chemistry at work. A phenomenon that we call oxidizer assisted smoldering. Don't worry, we will explain that term in a moment. Now before we strike a match or mix a chemical, safety is priority number one. Potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizer and a chemical that demands respect. Here are the key safety guidelines. Make sure to wear protective gear, such as safety goggles, a lab coat, and gloves. Make sure to do it in a well-ventilated area. Wear, have fire safety at the ready. Have adult supervision, and make sure to not ingest any chemicals or get into contact with it. Now here is what you need if you want to conduct this experiment by yourself. Potassium permanganate crystals. A small amount, a few grams is more than enough. This is our oxidizer. It's typically a dark purple or almost black crystalline powder. Now potassium permanganate is often sold in hardware, pool supply or chemical supply stores. It may be labeled as a water treatment chemical or by old names like Condi's crystals. You will also need water to dissolve the permanganate and make a solution. Ordinary distilled or tap water would work just fine. You will also need a small container or a beaker for mixing the solution. A glass jar or a cup will do. Just avoid using nice kitchenware because it may get stained. You also need a stirring stick or a spoon to dissolve the crystals. Again, it might get stained, so if you're using something, make sure it's disposable or something you don't mind discoloring. You will need a sheet of paper to draw on. Uncoated, absorbent paper works best. For example, uh, filter paper, newsprint or plain printer paper. Avoid glossy or coated paper. The solution won't soak in well. And very thin paper can be tricky as it may burn up too quickly. A heavy paper like cardstock, 
can work, but it might take longer to smolder. So also make sure to have a paintbrush or a cotton swab, a Q-tip, something like that to draw your lines or design on the piece of paper with the solution. A small paintbrush like for watercolors work great. Now the next thing we need is a heat source for ignition. Now we can recommend using a wooden splint or a stick that you can ignite, then blow out to use the glowing ember. Now the next thing is optional. You can use a tape or a clamp if you want to hold the paper vertically or at an angle while it uh, burns. Tape it to support. Otherwise laying it flat on a metal tray is also just fine. Now also to make sure that you don't paint your beautiful table all purple, make sure to put some paper towels under the piece of paper while you're drawing. So you ready? Put on your safety goggles and then we can start. Now stir this mixture until the crystals dissolve. The water will turn a vivid pinkish purple color, almost like grape juice. Now what is happening? The potassium permanganate crystals are disassociating into permanganate ions, which give that intense purple color. Now you have your oxidizer solution, essentially oxygen in liquid form, ready to soak into our paper. You want a fairly concentrated solution for this experiment. If you have a lot of undissolved crystals at the bottom, that's okay. It means that the solution is near saturation. A saturated solution of potassium permanganate at room temperature is about 6.4 grams per 100 milliliter. But there is no need to be that precise. Just ensure it's strongly colored. Important? This solution will stain anything it touches, so handle it carefully. If you accidentally get a drop on your skin, it may turn brown on your skin as it dries. That's the manganese dioxide staining organic matter. But don't panic, it will fade away in a day or two. Clean spills with promptly with water. Now while drawing, avoid big puddles of the solution. If an area is too soggy, dab off excess with a paper towel. Now after you're done, make sure to allow the paper to dry. Leave it for 20 to 30 minutes or use a hairdryer to speed up the process. Now we use the glowing splint to ignite the paper and watch. The glow should continue on its own crawling along the drawn pattern. If it stops, you might reapply the glowing splint and encourage it again. Once it's really going, it will propagate by itself. Now what exactly is happening during this oxidizer assisted smoldering? Well this is the heart of the experiment. The heat from the ember decomposes the potassium permanganate in the paper. When the potassium permanganate is heated it breaks down and releases oxygen gas. In fact the reaction can be written as this. Now in this case the oxygen comes right out of the fibers of the paper. Normally burning paper needs oxygen from the air to keep going. But here the oxidizer is providing oxygen internally. The paper, which is made of cellulose, can continue to oxidize, burn, even without open air circulation because we've planted an oxygen source along it. Essentially the paper is undergoing a decomposition combustion reaction. The cellulose oxidizes to char, carbon, carbon dioxide, water vapor, etc. using the oxygen from the permanganate's decomposition. Now this is also why the fire traces only where the chemical was. Those regions have their own oxygen supply. You might notice the burn is more vigorous than normal smoldering paper. It can even burn against the airflow, gravity or a light breeze, because it is not dependent on drawing oxygen from the air. Now, in fact, paper treated with oxidizer burns at a lower ignition temperature and faster than untreated paper. We have effectively made a miniature solid propellant in the paper. Now, this might seem like just a neat party trick or something that you would see at a science fair demo. But the concept you saw here has broad importance. Now, as mentioned, what we did on paper is analogous to how solid rocket fuels work. They contain oxidizers like ammonium perchlorate or potassium nitrate intimately mixed with fuels. So they burn from the inside out without needing air. Our experiment is a slow motion version of that chemistry. Next time you see a rocket launch, you know there is an oxidizer in that fuel making the flame possible 
and powerful. Now, the principle of oxidizer plus fuel is behind all fireworks, gunpowders, and flares. The old black powder that is used to shoot cannons was 75% saltpeter, an oxidizer, 15% charcoal, and 10% sulfur. Again, a mixture that carries its own oxygen. Road flares that burn in the rain or wind do so because they contain oxidizers like strontium or potassium nitrates or perchlorates. That keeps them burning steadily. Our paper had its own built-in oxidizers, so it kept burning even when a normal piece of paper might have gone out. Now, potassium permanganate is like a Swiss army knife for survivalists. We demonstrated one of its fire-related uses. If you carry a small vial in a survival kit, you have a way to help start fires, for example by mixing it with sugar or glycerin to produce a flame, basically an aggressive version of what we saw. Now you can also sanitize the water in an emergency and treat wounds when diluted. And if you need to signal for help, you could splash a strong permanganate solution on something to create a bright purple signal mark. That vibrant color isn't found in nature and is highly visible. In fact, firefighters use a permanganate reaction to start controlled burns in wildlands. They inject permanganate-filled balls with glycol and drop them from helicopters to ignite brush fires in a precise way. Essentially a larger scale application of the permanganate-fueled combustion you've seen. Beyond emergency uses, this experiment underscores a fundamental concept in chemistry, the role of oxidation reduction or redox reactions. Potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent. It readily grabs electrons from other molecules, which often means it helps burn or break them down. Now in our experiment, potassium permanganate oxidized the cellulose, taking electrons and facilitating its conversion to CO2 and char. While the permanganate itself got reduced, gaining electrons, turning into manganese dioxide. Now this kind of reaction is at work in countless processes, from industrial synthesis of chemicals to metabolic reactions in our body. It's the same type of reaction that causes iron to rust, slow oxidation, or a battery to produce electricity. Transfer of oxygen or electrons is key. Here, we just made it kind of visible. Now, oxidizers are used in real life whenever we need to drive a reaction that plain air can't support. Rockets flying into space, emergency flares burning brightly, survival fires started without matches, water purified when no clean supply is around. These all rely on chemistry you just saw on a small scale. Potassium permanganate is a star oxidizer that has found its way into all those applications from enabling rocket fuel mixtures to being carried in wilderness kits to keep you safe. Now if you think we missed something, make sure to tell us in the comments and if you want to know more about rapid decomposition, make sure to watch this video about hydrogen peroxide next.